<laughs> we are recording. Happy Monday, Inspire Beauty. Brittany here. Oh, it is our last, last Zoom of 2017. And I'm kind of like, it's kind of full circle for me because our last Zoom of 2016 was the very first time you got to hear from the lovely lady that is going to speak tonight. Um, and about a year ago is when our friendship really probably started. So like, this is like full circle moment and I'm so excited. But um, Julianne Kandia, she is like, I'm honorary happy and fit. She's honorary inspire beauty. Um, she is like my rock in this business and I get to hear from her and just hear from the great ideas that happen um, through Trina Gray and through the entire community that she's a part of, and it gets to trickle into Inspire Beauty. And so I'm just so honored that um, not only has our friendship evolved, but our business relationship is just um, so special to me as well, because you guys on Inspire Beauty benefit from this woman. So um, she's talking tonight about the big idea. Now, they spoke about the big idea. Trina came to the National Wake Up Call and she did talk on this topic, but Julianne has such a an special shout out for Julianne because she got shouted out on the National Wake Up Call that morning. But she has such a unique voice on social media and, and I'm sure certain that you follow her. So you see it for yourselves. But she truly has taken the big idea before it even was a big idea and ran with it. And so now she gets to kind of break down what that's looked like in her business, how you can make that uh, do something really unique and special for you in 2018, but also how you can connect that confidently into who you are, uh, what your mission is, and where you are trying to go in 2018. So Julianne, I'm so excited. I'm going to let you, sister, take it away. Yay! Thanks. Sorry if my voice sounds weird. Uh, I just went to Arizona, and I think it's allergies, but it's totally fine. Um, first and foremost, I think before anything, without with taking action in this business and um, whatever it may be, you really need to know why you're doing it. And I think a lot of times where a lot of coaches get tripped up is they, they use a checklist of, oh, I've been posting on social media. I've been inviting. I've been listening to PD. I'm doing all the right things. I'm doing all the right things, Julianne. Like it should be like playing out, right? And I've been so guilty of that. And I think the biggest thing, you can be doing all the right things, but if it's not aligned to a bigger and deeper purpose, that it's going to it's going to make you feel defeated when you do only get four likes on social media or when you do get more objections than yeses or, you know, your workouts suck, things like that. Like if you don't really know what it is that you're, why you're even here, like, yes, it's to help people for sure. I think the greatest thing about this entire business is that no matter what you do, you're going to influence someone because you're an influencer. <clears throat> you are a positive role model. You are someone who is is breaking the cycle of social media. Uh, most of social media negative. Most of social media plays in horrible things, and we do the opposite of that. We share health, happiness. We share getting fit in every area of our life. We share empowerment. We share community. We share what's possible. Dreaming big. We su share support. We show others what's possible with not just ourselves, but with a group of people that we can genuinely be excited for the successes of others. And, but again, if you, you, that all can be such a checklist if you don't know what your vision is. And I think the biggest thing that I've struggled with this year is, is what, what I was doing. Like, what was my goal? Like, what was, what was my why? I felt like I had it all. And I wasn't, I keep telling my team like to level up. I need to level up. I need to level myself up. I need to raise the bar for my own self. Uh, so I can start making these daily tasks of the vital behaviors, something of more empowerment, something more. And, and once I did that, uh, I completely recorrected my, my route, or I guess it, it, it kind of was like the bumper, uh, on the street, like it kind of course corrected me to where I felt like it clicked for me again, because I still showed up. I still checked everything off the list, but there just seemed to be something missing. And my biggest tip for you to be a successful coach and successful person is it's not about the money you make. It's not about the rank you get. It's not about how many success club points, all that kind of stuff, but it is so much more about um, the bigger picture, the vision, like where you're going and why you want to go there. And then secondly is stop looking at all these to-do lists and, and tasks as bad things. Like success club, I was telling this to my, my team is like, you guys were all probably once a success club point and I'm freaking happy that you were. Because if you weren't, you wouldn't be here and I wouldn't know you. 
And to me, that's what Success Club is. It's this Zoom right now. It's everyone. I was the one coach who didn't get a, a challenge back, but um, you got like for the most part, I bet everybody was a Success Club point. But when you think about that, it's like you're a person to me on this team of a community that makes a difference. And once I started seeing that at, in that kind of light, I was like, dang, like I got to do this every month. Someone needs this. Like they need this gift. And again, you can have that daily to-do list task and you can kind of, my team has been talking about comparison a lot. A lot of people have been struggling with that. That's one of my personal struggles in this business is comparison and getting frustrated with being, not being where I want to be when I want to be there. Um, and it's easy to look at the highlight reels of coaches. It's easy to look at their success club points or their rank and, and not really see behind the scenes of that, of the amount of objections or amount of defeat, uh, self doubt right here, all those things. Um, but, but I started aligning, man, like me expanding my network is the reason why I know Nikki, <laughs> like expanding my network, right? Like, like going to live events, I wouldn't know Brittany. Like I wouldn't know her if I didn't go to her super Saturday. Like, it's just so crazy for me to think about that. Um, and when, when you know you, why you're doing something in, in the vision, the, all the stuff that you need to do to get there, when you connect that to a joy and connect that to a deeper purpose, you're going to get it done. So instead of looking at success club as a bad thing, you look at it as a gift. Instead of looking at posting on social media as something you're scared about, you can look at it and be like, I get to go against what social media is. And I get to show others that you can have a social media platform of empowerment that people can count on me. When they come to my page, they're going to find something that will brighten their day. And that's all I want, honestly, on social media is like, I know every single day someone is not missing out. Like every day someone can come to my social media and, and change for the better or have some sort of hope. Someone can come to my social media and see that there's something for them there. And that's, that's a really cool thing. So presenting this big idea and running with it. Um, I also wanted to talk about, uh, having confidence in that transition, having confidence in presenting, having that confidence in, um, inviting someone, having that confidence in, in delivering, uh, this gift to someone. Because I think what happens is we're checking everything off the list, but something's not clicking. Like you're, you're, you're telling me that you're having all these conversations, but no one's, no one's, getting a challenge back, right? No one is joining your group. They're telling you, no, it's too expensive. They don't have time. Well, we're, we're missing something. And I really think like there are such simple ways and effective ways to fixing this. Uh, and it all stems from you one needing to do it right. Reaching out to people needing to be present and consistent and confident. Uh, but really understanding is what you're offering. It will really change someone's life that sometimes we get weary. Sometimes we, uh, get uncomfortable and nervous about the price, or sometimes we just are like, I don't know what to say. And you try to say the perfect thing that you forget why you started in the first place. I think the easiest way to talk about this is simply just sharing your why. So when you do get a social media, like you'll be like, Kaylin, thanks for showing me the love on my post today. I really appreciate the love and the support. I don't know if you saw, but I have a 14 day group coming up on confidence, fitness, and nutrition. I would love for you to see if this is a good fit for you. Let me know if you'd want more details. Kaylin's like, yeah, Julian, I love more. And you're like, great. I'm going to give you more information, but this is where it changes. Instead of just giving them the what, Oh, my group is 14 days. We're going to be doing this, this, and this. You're going to say, before I give you more information, these are three reasons why I do it. Or before I give you a, any information. These are three reasons why I think you should do it. That your story is the thing that is going to get coaches to do this, to get challengers to do this. It's not the why. It's not how much you know about Shakeology. It's not about the content of your group and if it's perfect for them or not. I really believe the thing that is going to get someone motivated to, to conquer their why, to someone to get motivated to, to get past that objection is of why you do it. Like that's enough in this business for you to be like, man, you know, I just need to tell you why I do it. I need to tell you why I drink Shakeology. I need to tell you why I'm a part of this team. I need to tell you why I love these workouts. This is what it's done for me. It's changed every aspect of my life. It's too easy to talk about because of how much it's transformed my life. 
I think a lot of coaches are going into conversations very timid. I think a lot of coaches are going into conversations nervous. I think a lot of Coach, coaches are going into conversations weary of just like, don't want to step on toes. I don't want to be too salesy. They overthink it. Then they don't do it. But if you really get into those conversations and you're like, man, like, like Rebecca, you got to do this sister. Like this is going to change your life. And I only can say that because it did that to me. Everything you've been seeing on my social media, this is what I've been doing. And it has changed me. I was so nervous. I was so nervous about failing. I was so nervous about, um, of, you know, whatever it may be, but man, was I wrong. So if you're feeling that way, I get you. And I feel like that is like, I would already be like, man, yeah, Julian, I'm in like that type of conviction and confidence of like what this did for you and what it's going to do for me. I trust you. So in my conversations, that's how I am. I'm just 100% transparent with my why. I am not transparent. Like, I think you guys would be really surprised on the what in, in my head, like the knowledge um, of how much I know. It's not really about what you know, but it's why you do it. Like, I don't need to know every little detail. I don't need to give the exact amount of information to someone, but my story and my conviction and confidence is enough. How, like, I just think I'm like, coaches are waiting. They're like, oh, until I'm emerald. Or until this, then I'll do this. Where it's like, man, when I first started, I was 35 pounds heavier. I had never done a challenge group. I had never tried Shakeology. I didn't know anything about the compensation plan. I didn't know anything about coaching. I didn't even really know it was an MLM. I didn't even know what that meant, right? But that's not why people join me. It wasn't about what I knew, but it was about why I jumped and joined myself. And you just have to have the confidence of like, if you're drinking Shakeology right now and doing the workouts and you're getting a transformation, you're noticing not just a physical one, but a mental one where I think you get fit in every area of your life being a coach. Isn't that enough? Like it didn't, it wasn't for me that I didn't need to be like, Oh, this is beach body. Like this, I didn't need to know all that. All I heard was an empowering conversation on a zoom. That is why I said yes to coaching. No one ever asked me. I just heard a zoom and I was like, I'm in whatever that was. I'm in, I need that. And that's how I speak. And people are like, man, okay, I trust you. I got this. Like, all right. And you just pour love into them. So before you run with this big idea, like you need to understand that these little daily tasks are transform, like it transforms your business. But if you don't have a joy behind those daily tasks, you're not connecting it to a bigger picture and a why, it's going to be pointless. But at the end of the day, you just need to do your crap. So maybe you've had 20 objections. So you could either choose two things. You could be like, no one wants to join me. I'm not inspiring. I'm not a good coach, right? Or you'd be like, I just need to have 20 more. Or maybe you're like, man, like it just takes me forever. I was having this conversation just before the Zoom with some of my leaders. And I was saying, I feel like we race against this clock. Well, I've been a coach for this amount of time, so I should be here. Says who? Says who? Everybody else you're watching and that's why you're distracted because then that's where you feel defeated and that's where you put blinders on. I feel like we get into in this headspace of like, man, since I've been a coach for this amount of time, I should be making this much or at this rank, whatever. Like, don't you just think that wherever you are right now is just part of your story to tell? Don't you think wherever you are right now is just part of where you need to be going to get to where you, you want to go? Like, because I can just tell you when I can look back in my three and a half years of coaching, I'm like, man. I wouldn't trade a day for the day I had a diamond quit on the day of summit. I wouldn't trade a day where I had three coaches quit in one day. I wouldn't trade a day where I had three coaches quit and join a new coach. I wouldn't trade a day, right, that I had a challenger quit after day one. I wouldn't trade a day for a coach signing up the same day and quitting the same day. Like, I, that all happened. Like, I would never trade that because I look back now and I'm like, man, that made me. And the reason it made me is because I didn't quit, right? Or when you have people on your team leave for shiny objects, things that aren't healthy, that they're just chasing quick fixes. And then me, it just validates of, man, I want to work with people who want to work hard. I want to work with people who are confident in this process. I don't want to work with people who only care about money. Like that's not who I want to work with. And this business this ah, it's so hard calling it a business because coaching is so much more than that. When you can connect to this bigger picture, you're like, man, this is transforming my thoughts. It's transforming this process for me that where I get to look back and be like, man, those moments, those pivotal moments that most people quit, I didn't. And it's crazy because this business is built on four things. 
truthfully, it really is. It's built on personal development. And I'm not just saying like quarter of the day show is awesome. Like confidence on the go is awesome. But if you're struggling with obstacles in your life, if you're struggling with big barriers and you're blaming barriers, you need to read obstacles the way. Like if you, if you are like, man, everything is awful in my life. Like I have huge roadblocks in my life. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to read. If you struggle with perfectionism, you need to read Finished by John Acuff, right? It's not just about leadership or like, how do I like get my team to do things? Like you really need to like tailor your personal, if you're lacking energy, energy bus, it's so good. Like you'll feel more fulfilled. Maybe it's the charged life. Like you have no direction or passion in your life and you're kind of just like stuck. The charge by Brandon Burchard is going to switch it for you, right? It's going to be awesome. So personal development is game changing in this business. Now, I really think that professional development is equally as important. If you're struggling with success club, you should be watching every single video on YouTube about success club. If you're struggling with how to get to diamond, you should be going to YouTube and listening to every single video on diamond on YouTube, right? If you're struggling with conversations, challenge groups, whatever it may be in this business, you need to go teach it to yourself. Personal and professional development are game changing in this business. For me, I like to have a mixture of both. Um, being a product of the product. That was a big wake up call for me. Uh, starting a program and finishing a program and sharing your journey throughout that shift shop was awesome. I shared every single day of that. And I, my body went to a whole new level. I followed the meal plan exactly how I needed to. And I did every single workout and it was crazy how that happened. When I see people quit and they're like, Oh, I didn't lose any weight. I'm like, or this or that. I'm like, that's because you didn't do it. It's not about a physical transformation to me, but like, Whoa, come on. I didn't want to do hammer and chisel because I didn't want to do weight. And then I did hammer and chisel and I'm like, okay, well played hammer and chisel. Like you transform my body. Like I was just like, oh, like, cause I would just do the workouts I liked to do. You know what I mean? Like max 30 strength, uh, power and Friday fight, not sweat and not cardio, but I would just like, like go through those three and for a really long time. And I was like, dang, like, okay, so start a program and finish one 80 day obsession. I can't wait. It's going to be incredible. Um, I'm going to follow the meal plan with that one. So I'll be having wine. There's mimosas with, with, with Brittany this next week. Um, and getting ready for 80 day obsession and then inviting. And why are we looking at, did you know inviting is the thing? So personal development and being a product of the product is the thing that changes you. That's the thing that self care is number one in this business, but inviting is the thing that actually moves your business. Inviting is the one thing that is going to get you to that vision inviting is the thing where you're drowning in that debt you hate that is that big weight on your chest every time you go to bed or you open up your bank account and you just like cringe looking at it you go to the grocery store and you're nervous to buy something or you can't go on a trip because you don't have enough money like inviting is the thing to make that weight not be there maybe it's you want to help a family member maybe it's you don't want to stress out about Christmas. Maybe it's, you just don't want to stress about it. Maybe if your car breaks, you won't worry about it. I think that Beachbody is plan A for fitness and plan B for finances. For me, it's plan A for everything right now. But in the beginning, it was plan B for finances. And it takes time. This is a delay result business. All those people who are quitting, let them quit because they're not meant to be here. I want to be surrounded by people who are willing to work hard. And I want to be working with people who aren't bashing and do all like I want people who genuinely want to invite for the right reasons that that's why you need the why in this business and that's why you need the vision the vision is what like that big like that's the thing that gets you out of bed in the morning and that why is the thing that keeps you honest and humble that why for me is the person that I get to help every day the person that I get to inspire right and then recognition what kind of company makes that a vital behavior? Vital means very important, I'm assuming, right? Of your vitals, like check your vitals. Are you alive, right? That's what keeps your business alive, these vitals. Um, recognition, that's really cool that we get to celebrate people, but maybe you're just celebrating the, the results. You're not celebrating the process. That's a big thing that I learned this year and in the last few years is that I need to celebrate the process for people. Did that person make a post? Maybe you have some coaches that aren't doing a lot, but maybe they did put that social media post out there, or maybe they did start and finish a program, right? Maybe they participated every day in your challenge group. You should be freaking blowing up the recognition, whether it's in the team page. And that's going to be my other thing. 
is you can't just show up every five minutes, welcoming new coaches, making one post a day in there, building other people up. It is vital for you. That's what I did when I first started. I didn't have anyone, but I acted like I did. I didn't have anyone in my downline. And I was like, man, I'm going to act like that I do because when I do have a team now, like when I, when I do have a team one day, I want them to see me as a leader. And it's not going to just magically happen when people join you. Does that make sense? Because let me tell you, my team page was quiet for a year and a half. You know where you could see how many people have read a post? It would say everybody. And there wouldn't even be one like or comment. I showed up every day. I showed up every single day in my team page when no one else did. And I acted like a leader and I became a leader. That recognition is key. If you are a coach or an Emerald coach, your biggest focus right now needs to be self-care, number one and number two, being a product of the product and, and um, personal development. On your way from Emerald to Diamond, inviting, 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 inviting. Like you, a good goal to go for every single month. And you can't get blinded by these goals because too much pressure. So I was telling my team, I was like, take off the bricks on your chest that you're putting there yourself. Like you put so much pressure on yourself to hit these goals because of other people, right? Like stop putting those bricks there. They don't need to be there. When you align Success Club to this Zoom, then maybe you're like, I got to hit Success Club. Like more people need to be here. Like they need to experience this. They need to be part of this community. That's how I feel every time I'm on my team page. I'm like, I need more people here. When I'm on a Zoom, I'm like, three more people need to be on this. Like they need to experience this. Who does this? Who spends their Monday night freaking like getting amped up because there's enough success for us all. Like so many times you see where it's like that person's just going to be successful. And then that person, no, 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 everybody gets to be successful on the zoom, which I think is really incredible. And everybody needs to be here. So hitting six monthly and going Emerald again and again and again. That is the key. You hit success club, you get new blood. It's so important to get new blood because what happens is you don't hit success club, then you have the same challengers for months and months and months, and then they burn out, they're done, and then you're just like, it's just me in this challenge group, and this sucks. The more new blood you get, the more excited you become. I have been so excited for all of my challengers in the last six months of my business. It has been awesome. Watching them, celebrating them, like just seeing them thrive has given me so much joy and fulfillment as a coach because we're coaches and then we're leaders, right? The coach, we are coaches to our challengers and we're leaders to our team. And maybe you have a team of just you. Maybe you have a team of just your husband. It will grow. I promise. I was there. So success club and going Emerald, two new coaches a month. Well, Julianne, well, how do I make that happen? Let's start talking about the big idea. So Trina Gray is the most brilliant person I've ever met. Um, she's amazing. She's when you're around her, she's a walking PD book. I'm not joking. Like you just are with her and you can just sit and stare and just listen because she just is so articulate. Um, she turns every life lesson into a story um, or life experience into a lesson. She, uh, she just is so amazing with the way she can connect life experiences to this business. I really admire her. Um, I didn't have a supportive upline sponsor when I joined this business, but I just watched Trina and I watched what she did. And she was always very transparent with what she did. She watched once repeat. You guys, there's nothing special. Sometimes people look for the perfect script, right? Um, the perfect thing to say to someone, the perfect way to expand your network, all the kinds of stuff. There isn't one. I've tried really hard. I've listened to so many YouTube videos. No one actually is willing to share what they do, right? Um, it's not the case. I think we're, we're wasting so much time thinking and not acting. And Trina is someone who acts. I remember I was in Chicago with her this year. And I think there were about six of us there in Chicago. And I remember we were about to work out. And she was 15 minutes late. And she's a 15-star diamond in her, once, her first CBC and a 10-star diamond in her second CBC. And I think her third CBC just went one star diamond, maybe. Um, she has a very solid business. She's in the millionaire club, all that stuff. But again, she said, if I were to go to the grocery store, no one would care. And um, it's true. Like, that's how she is. Like, it's, it's not about that to her. But I just really want you to know something with all those accolades and all that kind of stuff. She's just a normal person. And that stuff doesn't matter to her. This business matters to her because of the people. And she's, she is someone who will memorize everyone's name. 
it's incredible. She'll know their dog's name. Like she probably knows Brittany has Frankie. Like she just is like so detailed and, um, she knows how to run a successful business. So she's 15 minutes late. She's like, sorry, it was the last day of the month. And she's like, look at this guy. Oh, do you want to say hi? Say hi to Aunt Brittany. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> I hear, I, hear, I hear my auntie. Anyway, they're good friends. Um, she was 15 minutes late, and it's because she's like, sorry, guys, I had to hit success club. This was just this year. So someone who, where I look, and I'm like, whoa, that's where I want to be one day, right, is late to a workout because she had to hit success club. I just hope that you're realizing how in the trenches she really is. She's really in the trenches. I've learned so much from her. Um, but she did a national wake up call and the big idea and she learned it from leadership. Uh, no one said it was the big idea, but she hears things and puts it together into something magical. And so what she gathered from leadership was the big idea. And she had talked about this briefly on the national wake up call. And I'm like, man, no, I wish people could just hear the depth of how she speaks because she's taught me the big idea and in such depth and she only had what 20 minutes to speak so it's kind of hard to cram it all in 20 minute call so i'm really hoping to to help you through this process so the big idea that's who you want to work with and you know it's not just women like you have to get really specific with this and i think the fear of the big idea is that you get too narrow it's not true like it's crazy caitlin and nikki are on here they're both dental hygienists and um they're success partners but I, I wasn't that. I was the teacher. So you have to understand the big idea doesn't mean you exclude people. But what ends up happening is when you have such a detailed big idea, you work with people you love. And I can genuinely say I show up to Zooms and I show up to one-on-ones mentoring calls um, and my team page full of excitement because I'm working with people who want this. I work with people who genuinely care about others they're not selfish they're not they're not chasing shiny objects is my team perfect no way but all i'm saying is because of this big idea i'm getting excited to help and with this big idea you're not afraid to talk to your coaches in a way that you were talked to like on how to be successful because you're here right and don't you just want your coaches to show up sometimes and they don't like they don't even show up to team calls and you're like how do i get business builders julianne and i'm like you don't like what you do is you get people to fall in love with this process and then that builds business builders. So how can you do that? It's through the big idea. So with the big idea, what you need to do is you need to be really, really specific. My big idea is this. I want to work with teachers, specifically women who are overworked, burnt out, underpaid, and all they do and what they look forward to in life is the couch and watching Netflix and binge watching TV because they're so exhausted. Like that is my avatar. So maybe I have a teacher who loves their job and isn't burnt out. That's not my big idea. My big idea is the teacher who's sitting on her desk after school, completely defeated saying, is this what it's going to be like for the rest of my life? How can I do this for 40 more years? That is my big idea. My big idea is all she, she wants to do when she gets home is binge watch TV, but says she doesn't have time to work out because she's so tired. She's so physically tired that the idea of going to the gym is so even more exhausting. My big idea is to the woman who sets three alarms in the morning and still presses snooze each time and they're 15 minutes apart. Then when she hits her third, you see Caitlin, she's my big idea. She gets me like, this is my big idea, right? Then when she gets to the third alarm, she sets another one for 15 minutes and she's rushing out the door and she doesn't have any breakfast. So she goes to Starbucks real fast and gets a, a caramel frappuccino at least three times a week, maybe Panera for a bagel, which I should have really been getting my bagels at Starbucks because of those ones, Brit, the, 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 that's a side note, but those are good anyway. But my big idea is she she says she doesn't have time to meal prep, but she's ordering Jimmy John's for lunch. My big idea is that she doesn't have a lot of money or a lot of funds. She's living paycheck to paycheck, but she still happens to go spend $150 at Target on pointless things that don't serve her. My big idea, her idea of a good time is drinking on the weekends. Are you like, are you guys like, whoa, like that's me. Like that's like, that's totally me because I got really specific. So for me, I'm not just trying to help burnt out women. 
I'm trying to help the burnt out teacher. I'm trying to help the girl who literally doesn't know what's going on in her life. Like she's just like, oh, I'm so tired and exhausted. I can't even think. But my big idea is when I teach her that my workout is less than the time of her show, that if she just watches one less show, she can do a workout. And then when she does, she's not going to like it. She's going to actually hate it. And in fact, she's probably not going to complete her first program start to finish. That was me. Um, but she's going to do it and she's going to start to realize that she has a little bit more energy at night. So what's going to happen over time is that actually as soon as she gets home, she's not going to sit on the couch and watch TV. She's going to hit play. And then she's going to kind of do some other stuff and work a business part time instead of watching TV. That's my big idea. She just doesn't know it yet. So your big idea, you need to get really, really, really specific. Are you the mom who has daycare kids who loves that she has daycare kids? Or are you the mom who has daycare kids and hates it and wants to be home? There's two, there's different types of moms, right? What kind, are you a dog mom? Like, like you need to be super, super specific with your big idea. And then along the lines of your big idea, this is how you're going to post on social media. So this is what you need to do on a piece of paper. You need to write one through four and you need to write big idea and you need to get as detailed as you can about your person. And this is going to help you in 2018. It's going to help you today. Actually, it's going to help you the rest of the year. And then for number two, you need to think and list off as many posting ideas as you can for your big idea. So the big snooze, right? I'm going to talk about um, not sleeping in the middle of the night. I'm going to talk about setting alarms. I'm going to talk about um, being overworked. I'm going to be talking about being underpaid, exhausted. I'm going to talk about couch to coach. I'm going to talk about hating the gym. I'm going to talk about having every intentions of wanting to go to the gym but never makes it happen. I'm going to talk about Starbucks, Panera, Jimmy John's, Target. I'm going to talk about all those things. I'm going to talk about Cheetos, Cheez-Its, beer. That's what I preferred, right? I'm going to talk about how I thought I was healthy, but when you looked at my car, it was like grapes and bananas and then like lean cuisine because it was quick. That was my car. Like that was my grocery cart, right? And I'm going to talk about that stuff. And I'm going to talk about how I just didn't know. And I'm going to talk about as many things as I can to my big idea. I mean, it's not just going to be bad though. I'm going to talk about how I love teaching, right? That I feel so fulfilled with it. I love being in front of a class. Um, but I'm going to be talking specifically to my big idea. I'm going to talk about anxiety. I'm going to talk about hating working out. I'm going to talk about how meal prepping is such a lifesaver when you're a teacher, when you literally have no time. I'm going to really own this part-time hustle. Um, my avatar doesn't know she could be her full-time CEO. Like she doesn't know she could be her own boss, but she does like the idea of an awesome community and, and posting on social media and covering her grocery bill. Like she loves that. And then when she covers her grocery bill, she's going to realize she can start making a little bit more money. And so my avatar, my big idea loves this part-time hustle. She's not in this for full-time yet. She will though. She'll, she'll work this business for a little bit and see the potential, but right away she's going to own the part-time hustle. So maybe you need to own the part-time hustle. Like, do you do this part-time? I worked my business in an hour or less a day. And then I sacrificed football on the weekends and, and would, would work instead. Does that make sense? So are you a part-time hustler? Don't be ashamed of that. Like, you need to own that. Like, you need to be like, I love, like, I don't think people need to do Beachbody to leave their job. That's not what I believe. That's not my belief system in this. But I do believe that you'll have the option. Wouldn't you just want the option? Like what happens if something shifts and twists and changes in your life? And you just are like, whoa, I just built this whole business. Like I'm not even stressed. That's pretty awesome. Sometimes it's really hard to see that though. It's really hard to see that potential at first. I was one of them and I was so thankful for Trina because she allowed me to see that this could be the bridge to freedom. And I just kept saying, why not me? Why not me? Why not me? Why not me? Every time I saw someone speaking, every time I heard a national wake up call, every time I went to summit and saw someone on stage, I said, why not me? I always believed it was possible for me. And I think that's where it needs to start with you. Do you believe it's possible with you? And for me, um, I didn't know how I could pull it off. I hated fitness. You just heard me. You heard my, my big idea. Like, how could someone like that do something like this? Like, doesn't make any sense. I still laugh. You guys, two years ago today was the last day of teaching. 
for me ever. Two years ago, I've been a full-time coach for two years. Are you kidding me? Like, I would have never thought that. I never thought someone like me could do something like this. I, it still surprises me a little bit. Um, so maybe you're in that boat too. But do you believe that you could figure it out? Do you believe eventually it can happen? I just told you how to make it happen. Success Club and going Emerald again and again and again. I just told you a secret. And I told you the four ways, the vital heartbeat to your business is the four vital behaviors. But if you don't have the joy, the belief, right? The confidence in, in those vitals, it's pointless. It's just a checklist. But there is no secret. Your why is huge when you can share that. So you can think of all of these posting ideas. I mean, nonstop. Like, think of as many as you can. Like, are you, instead of listening to the radio, do you listen to personal development now? Instead of hitting play on Netflix, you press play and do a workout? Are you the person who has no time, but you still made it work? Isn't it frustrating when people give you the objection you once had because you're over it now and you're like, are you not listening to me? I have the same objection as you and I changed my life. Um, yeah, I know. Like, I, it's so funny. I always joke with the coaches who come to me and tell me that they're struggling with objections. And then I remind them that they had that one for me for two years. <laughs> like, they'll be like, oh, everyone keeps telling me no. I was like, you told me no for two years. They're like, fine, mate. you made your point. And then I was like, keep on your merry way. Um, keep inviting. Um, just believe in people and they don't always believe in themselves. So your post ideas. This is what's going to be the thing that separates you from all coaches are these posts. because it's your story. It's you like that. It might be similar to other people, but it's different because it's your own words. Right. And it's not about the amount of likes that you get, but I was just telling coaches, like, I think the greatest freedom in this whole business is being authentically you. Is that cool? Like people are joining you just because you're you, like you're not filling out this contract to be this certain way. And, and have hours to work this and have a boss over like over your shoulder telling you what to do. Like legitimately you work on your self care and you share your story. That's your business. Like that's really cool. You share you. So these posts are the thing that separates you from everybody and it's your story. And my philosophy is if you don't post every day, someone misses out. Someone misses out on, on the hope that you get to give them. So you need to show up every single day and you need to show up hard and you just need to trust this process. You cannot expect this to happen right away. Like this is such a delay result business. It's so frustrating. Like I could be the first to tell you that it is so frustrating. Um, but it's part of the journey because you get to look back and you'd be like, man, that's right. Like, cause then you're going to have a group of people that struggle and you get to say you were there too. Like, I love it when coaches come to me and they're like, I had a coach quit. This is my husband. He like, he, I remember he's sitting on, I struggle with empathy sometimes. And we're like sitting on the couch and he's like, Julianne, I had my first coach cancellation email today. And I was like, oh, it's the worst. I had three. <laughs> and I like said that to him and he like looked at me and he's like, point made. And he just, he knew, like he realized I had been through it. And so I understood how he was feeling. It sucks. Like there's nothing fun about that email. Like we should get like new welcome emails. Like we need to have that, right? Um, it's so hard. It's so hard. And I've been there, but your, your posts, people need you. Um, and so the way that you're going to share your big idea is through your social media. Does that make sense? Are you guys excited to like brainstorm as many things as you can? I mean, like everything, like my social media, like my avatar, my big idea doesn't freak out about mismatch socks. Like there are people in my life that literally like, are, I can't do that. Like I need to have matching socks. My avatar, like totally fine with, with not having mismatched socks. They hate laundry. Like my avatar hates it. So like, that's why she doesn't have matching socks is because she hates laundry so much. Right. Um, so then after you have your big idea, who you want to work with specifically, like you're going to write it out in a sentence. I want to work with a woman, blank, 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 whatever. Right. Then you're going to think of as many posting ideas. The more, the better. Because you know those days where you're like, I don't know what to post. I don't know what to post. I don't know what to post. You're going to go to this list. And you're going to be like, oh, yeah, snooze, snooze, snooze. Like, that's my avatar. Um, she hates eating clean. Like, she doesn't know how to eat clean. Um, I'm going to teach my avatar to switch from cow's milk to almond milk. I'm going to teach my avatar about she doesn't have enough money because um, she goes to Starbucks so much, right? Like, I'm going to teach her. Um, and that's what you're going to do. 
The next thing you're going to do is maybe you're struggling with finding joy in challenge groups or you're finding joy um, in helping people because you just want them to get it, right? You're like, I don't need challenge groups to stay accountable. Or maybe you do feel that way. Great. I was not one of those people six months ago. Um, I started making challenge groups to my big idea. So I made a five day group of um, the launch project is what it was called. Not lunch. I should make one of those, but it's the launch, like launching out of bed because my avatar, my big idea struggles with the snooze. So I was like every day of my challenge, we're going to get up on our first alarm. It was so cool. You guys, it was actually really, really fun. Um, I did the charge to life boot camp, and I, I shared 14 videos from Brendan Burchard and about discovering a deeper purpose, right? I could do the busy woman boot camp. My avatar, my big idea is super busy. She says yes to everything and she literally is exhausted. Like she has no time for herself. Um, I could do the overworked teacher boot camp. Like, so what you want to do is you want, and so I call mine boot camps. You can call yours different things. I had the marriage retreat. It was really awesome. That's what it was called. Um, you can call your, it doesn't have to just be a challenge group. Like it could be called a boot camp. Oh, I'm trying to think my friend thought of one that was so cool and it wasn't, it wasn't boot camp challenge group. I can't remember what it was. Wellness camps. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Like how fun, like I want to go to a wellness camp, right? Um, man, I can't think of what maybe like the happy society. I don't know. Like you can call it something else that makes it your own. So you can even go look at a thesaurus and see like, what are some names for like group or whatever and kind of make it to your avatar. Does that make sense? It doesn't have to be like this challenge group or like whatever, but it could be like, um, the obstacle is the way that maybe that's what it's called. And it's not like boot camp. It's not challenge group. It's not anything. So how can you make these challenge groups to your big idea? And I just started listing as many names as I could as I, for my avatar. Um, and, and I got really excited about it. And I think with groups, what your big idea needs in them is not the best content, but you to be the best challenger. And that was a big wake up call for a lot of my coaches. Cause they're like, Julian, your groups are just so good. I'm like, yeah, but did you notice that they're very simple? And they're like, yeah, it's just cause I'm my best challenger. I'm in there and I never used to be. So I want you guys to know that I started making a switch about six months, maybe a couple months ago, really. And it's been so much fun. I've just been showing up, sharing my story. I share my social media posts in there. Um, I believe in people. I give them shout outs. I welcome them to the group with graphics um, and all those types of things. So be your best challenger and make challenge groups you're genuinely excited about. I had one, it was the dog mom boot camp, And it was right when I got Wyatt. And all it was, was me just asking questions about being a dog owner. And it was awesome. So a lot of my boot camps aren't like, Hey, what was your new rate, your nutrition for the day? What was your workout for the day? What was your nutrition? A lot of my boot camps are just centered around a specific theme. So if my marriage retreat, it was just 14 tips on how to have a better marriage. Guess what? Google's amazing. <laughs> and you can just go to Google and, and do that. Um, so they still do their workouts and have awesome nutrition, but our main focus is the confidence piece. Our main focus is growing as a person, if that makes sense. A lot of times, yes, it's building authentic relationships. Absolutely. I think whatever PD you're using is a great way to run a boot camp. Um, I've done I've done a lot of ones like you are a badass. I've done I am that girl. I even did a boot camp on This Is Us. I love that show. And we had a This Is Us boot camp. And we just talked about, I think I did all of the, the life lessons in This Is Us. And so every day was a life lesson from This Is Us. And then we just checked in. I love figuring out what were their biggest win was for the day and what was their biggest struggle for the day. Um, but again, my avatar hates working out. So if I can make the boot camps not just centered around working out, but around community, she joined for the community, right? I joined for the community, not for the fitness. But what ended up happening is I lost 35 pounds and became really fit. But it wasn't the thing that got me to do it. Does that make sense? So a lot of my coaches, it's the same thing. Like they're like, this community is amazing. Like I have to keep 
doing this. I remember there was a coach who quit. She wasn't mine. Um, our team page is just for coaches. And so we remove any people, anyone who's not a coach. And just cause like, it's not our, our team pages really ran like a challenge group, but she requested to get back into the team page. And I sent her a message and I said, Hey, like, just so you know, this is just for coaches. And she's like, I love that way too much. Like I need this back in my life. And I was like, that's so cool. Like, that's so cool that that's like what, like people, you can't unknow this. Like you can never unknow this community. I know it gets hard. I know that this business is hard. I know it can be frustrating. I know it's defeating. I know you can be pumped full of doubt and fear, but you can't unknow this potential. You can't unknow bettering yourselves. And the accountability that this group gives, there's nothing else like it. Sometimes I'm reminded when I'm around real life things, like I feel like this isn't real life. It is. But when people are so consumed with negativity or themselves, and I'm like, man, like that's not how my beach body life is. And I just, I only surround myself with the best. And I'm not saying that in an egotistical way. I'm saying I genuinely surround myself with people who just want to be better. Like they're not perfect. They struggle and they mess up a lot of times, you know, they're human, but at the end of the day, they just really want success for everybody. And where do you find that? And you guys, this, this, did I have cheese on my lip this whole time I've been talking or is it just chapped lips? I just got really distracted. I was like, that's embarrassing. Anyway, that's besides the point. Um, but you can't ever unknow this. Like there's so much potential in what we're doing. And I think a lot of times when people leave, they, they get so fixated on the quick fix or like wanting to make money or wanting to lose weight that they don't realize that having supportive people in your life that are against, like, I'm not for bashing. I'm not for, um, putting people down. And like, I think when people like snap into reality, they're like, man, like I remember having a community that was so powerful. And I just am telling you guys, like, there's nothing like this. I've never seen anything like this. I've never experienced anything like quite like this before. So you have the big idea, your posts, and then challenge groups. And then fourthly for your big idea is three reasons why this person should join you. So if I was talking to my big idea, um, I'm talking to a teacher. So the three reasons why she should join me is that she's going to create a deeper meaning and purpose. She's not going to be married to her job anymore. Right. Um, another reason that my big idea should join me is that, um, she'll have more energy throughout the day and more mental clarity. But then when she gets home, she's not exhausted. Like she actually can do hobbies, right? Like on Friday night, instead of just wanting to watch Netflix, she she'll actually want to be with people instead of escaping and watching TV. Like I will tell my big idea before telling her any information on my challenge group, the three reasons why she should join me. And that's game changing. Don't you think like when someone's like, Hey Kaylee, can I have more information? And you'd be like, yeah, totally. I'll give you more. But these are three reasons why I want to tell you why you should do this. And then before you tell them anything else, and then you're specifically talking to your big idea. So you get her already, like you get that she's busy overworked, that she feels like she's tied on a budget, like all that kind of stuff, right? Like I was thinking like, man, teachers don't really make that much. But like, if I'm telling my avatar, I think you should join this because if you're low on cash, this like beach body in demand for the year is going to save you so much money. Like the reason you should join me is because you're going to be eating out my, okay. My avatar was like strapped for cash, but she ate out a lot. <laughs> Like she like ate out a lot. I was like, man, if we just like don't go out to eat four times a month, you could afford Shakeology. Seriously, right? So I have to tell my big idea that she needs to hear that. So that is big idea in a nutshell. What I really encourage you to do, and maybe Brittany, you could do this as an activity um, on another Zoom or like in your team page, is really having everyone write it out because I think we hear these things and we get so inspired. But I always say then that was a waste of my time because I don't want you just to be inspired. I want you to take action and transform your business. That matters to me. My team knows this. They know my heart so greatly that I always say the success can't end with me. And how that happens is that you implement and take action, that you don't just sit and be inspired and feel good for a second, 
but you like actually do it and it starts to work for you. And that's all I want. Like, that's all I want for you. And I just truly believe that success isn't above any of us here. And I truly believe there's enough, like there's so much more. So many people are limited by dreaming too big um, or fearful that there isn't enough. And we have, I was thinking like on the airplane yesterday, there's what, 150 people on that plane didn't know one single person. I bet not everybody was a Beachbody coach on that plane, right? And so if I were to talk to everybody on that plane, I guarantee I could have a new challenger. Like there's always more than enough. But I think we think like because of our small community on social media, it seems like everybody's a coach. Or it seems like, like, do you guys ever go into the month being like, how can I hit success club again? I used to do that. I was like, it's not going to happen again. And, or you like try to reserve people, like you already have your six and you're like, hold off until next one. <laughs> and you like try to delay it Been there. But you guys, no, you can't think like that. Like don't have that limited in limitations on yourself. Like just know that there's more than enough if you take the action and have the belief. But Brittany, anything else? Oh, that was so good. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I've got pages upon pages upon pages, but the good news is we have um, next Monday's Christmas. The following Monday is New Year's Day. We will be back on not until January 8th with our Zooms. So you have so much time between now and then to not only work on this and really dig into you know truly who your avatar is. And I love in the beginning, Julianne talked about how, you know, professional development is so crucial. And if there's something that you're struggling with, like if you're sitting here listening and you're like, I don't really know how to figure out my avatar. It's like, there's an app for that. There's a zoom for that. I've done an uh, avatar zoom and those activities are on your resource page for inspire beauty. And so, and if they're not, if, if by some reason there is something missing, YouTube is going to be your best friend. Google will be your best friend. But I love that you know, anything she talked about tonight. So if you're struggling with figuring out who is she, who is that person I'm really trying to talk to or, or going through posting ideas, you know, you've got a gap of time right now before we kind of really get back into our, um, into my agenda of our professional development, right? Um, you've got a gap of time to really work on that. And you also have time, and this goes great with your vision board assignment. Because remember, we're working on our vision boards right now, too, for 2018. And I love that she just said, you know, that we get fearful of dreaming too big. This is something I do time and time again when I get on a one-on-one -on -one with somebody and they're getting started right, Zoom, is I'm like, there is not a single goal you will tell me that I don't believe you can achieve. And they say, oh yeah, oh yeah, Brittany, I know that. And then I'll say something like, like if you told me you wanna earn $500 this month, I'll help you do that. And they're like, yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. And I'm like, what if you wanted to be a millionaire? And then they're like, whoa, like, and then you see the, the you feel the energy shift, right? But that's possible. And there are living, walking human beings in our grocery stores that no one even knows about, like Trina Gray, that are stinking millionaires because, again, each success club point is a human being. Each person that we add to our team, their life can never be, like, they can't undo the knowledge and the love that has been poured into them from being a part of this. Um, you can't unknow bettering yourself. I love that line that Julia yeah. has. So Trina, so Trina was walking on a beach. This was like years and years and years ago. And she just looked at her husband. She's like, I want to be a billionaire. And he was like, okay. She's like, do you believe I can be a millionaire? And he said, yeah. And she said, okay. And this was right before Beachbody. Or it might've been right when Beachbody started. And if you know her story, um, she didn't work the business for two years. She's been in this business for 10. So it took time. Um, she was getting negative paychecks for her first year, flew home for, in the middle of summit, her first summit, hated it. Like she has this story that isn't like this. It all worked out for her. Like she had to figure it out herself. Her sister quit on her. Her, like it was one of her first coaches. She's a, she's a coach now again, but um, it's crazy. Like all she said was, I just want to be a millionaire. And now like I've been to her house. All she wanted was a house on a lake. And it's beautiful and serene and wonderful. And it's not about the things. It's not about like, I don't like, to me, it's never about money, uh, but it's what that money can do. It's not the love of the money, but I'm like, man, I would love to have more time with the people that I love. 
I would love to bless people more. I would love to just like send my family money um, and not stress about it. And that to me is why I, every invite you don't do gets you farther away from that goal. And you guys, it's not hard to send out a message. It's so crazy. Like people are like, this is so hard. I'm like, really? Like, or you're just lazy or like, you're just sorry about like, are you just like, bummed about the objections, just tweak it. Maybe the reason you're getting so many objections is because you're not coming across as confident and solution minded. Or maybe the reason you're getting so many objections is because you're not really having that many conversations and you're throwing all of your eggs into one basket and just waiting for the five people who've ghosted you for five months to say, yes, have new conversations. Um, there's so much success for all of us if we just like believed it. Yeah. And it's great, you know, you talk about that your big idea and that person, that avatar, when you bring them in, you're, you've pinpointed where they struggle. And I think it's important to remember that once they're a part of this community, that struggle doesn't just go away. They don't immediately turn into a mini you and have, you know, bypassed that journey it takes to get to where you are now. So you have to continue, and I said this earlier in the comments, just make sure that you're continuing, you know, we can draw people in through that big idea and through those social media posts and and connecting through challenge groups that speak to them and just all that stuff but remembering that they've got to